Hello there, and welcome to day 10 of the GTC. This is Friday, April the 17th. We have a very short uh, scenario today, but I do want to go back and go over some ground that I don't think is covered very well in the book. Uh, and parts of it are in the test, not a lot, but parts, and I just want to make sure that you understand it. Plus, I want to remind you, this is Friday, April the 17th, and at two today, we'll be holding a live uh, collab session with a teacher from Meade County, Carrie Gupton. She is a high school biology teacher, but she also has a certification in elementary. So she can walk the walk and talk the talk at any level. And she has a really nice Google Classroom that she is more than willing to let us take a peeky poo into. And I really appreciate her doing that. Um, so she's going to be joining us at two today. So if you can join us, please do. Um, I want to, besides doing the scenario, which is a cinch, I want to go back today and kind of talk about uh, parts of the Google Classroom that I don't think he gives very good um, coverage. So I'm going to share something with the class, which is what we've been doing all these uh, 10 days. So today we look at Google Groups and Classroom Structure. I'm going to start with the Classroom Structure and then we'll uh, go into the uh, Google Groups part of it. Classroom Structure. So if you look in your classwork, you'll notice that you, under your create button, you've got this thing at the very bottom called topic. Now, not that this is controversial, but the topic piece in my mind is how you organize your classroom. We talked about what all these things are. We talked about assignment. In fact, we did one. We've done quiz assignments. We've done the question. We've done material. We talked ad nauseum yesterday about the reuse post. But what is a topic? Well, let's play with that for just a little bit. So I'm going to go in here to topic, and I'm going to create one called unit one. Can you call it anything you want? Sure. And I'm going to add it. And as you can see, it says, can only see things that are published with published post. And that's correct. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm building it. They're not going to see it until I add stuff to it. If that makes sense. So I can either go in and build my topic structure and then add things into it as we go along, or I can go in and put everything into the topic right now. Let me show you. So up here we've got let's check for our understanding, which is something we built. I'm going to go here and I'm going to edit. And now if you come down here to the topic link, you'll see that there are now topics. And so if I want to put this in a unit, I say save. And when I come down here, I now see it. If I need to change the name of my topic, it's easy enough to do. Just come in here and hit rename and go in and type Unit 2. You'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Okay? So I've, I've got this ability to very easily add things in, but I have to start with them having been created first. Does that make sense? In other words, I can create the topics and I can add material to the topics, but I can't add the material from inside the topic. I have to create the material first, and then I can move or I can add things to my topics. Now, one of the things that everybody was screaming at Google about, which they just finally got through doing, is people were asking the ability to be able to do this. Isn't that dumb? In other words, you would think they would have that in place already. 
So as you can see, when we were creating our topic names, they were kind of coming in. The last one I created was the first one in the list. And if you're doing this in your classroom, you're starting with your unit one in the fall, you don't want that to be the bottom. Uh, you want it to be at the top, and then you can move the rest of them around in the way you want them. Now let's go back and let's do an assignment real fast. Remember how we played with this yesterday? So let's call this, uh, what was this, the Google, I'm just gonna call it Google Foo. And remember that the way we can do assignments that makes them very easy to do is we use the add link. We come into Google Drive. And here's all the stuff that we have been building over the last 10 days. And any of this can go into um, an assignment. So I just threw our little Google uh, site that we created and I put it in here. What can I do with it? I can assign it to a unit, a topic. And I'm, now I'm going to assign it. Now, in my unit one here, in my topic unit one, I now have two things that I've created. Let's go back to the stream. And you'll notice now in the stream, things are starting to pop in because we're creating things. Okay, and it says, posted a new assignment in Google Foo. Classwork, here's my organization. This is where kids are told what's coming up. And you'll notice over here, it says, do Monday. This is that uh, quiz we made. Yep. So that is all being done by the stream. And then the stream says, hey, there's a new assignment that that guy posted. Classwork, which is where you do the lifting, this is where everybody would then go to see what things you have out here. Let's keep going here. So I'm going to create another assignment. And once again, this one we'll call planets. Um, I'm going to add from my drive. And I've got multiple things over here that I can add to this one. So I'll grab this one, uh, which was another Google site. And I'll do a Google Drive again. This time I'm going to go and, okay, that's a Google Slides presentation. It tells you what everything is. Isn't that great? Then we go and add, you get the idea? So what we're doing here is we are putting in the stuff that we have created Says that one was deleted. We already have in here, and let's just throw a quiz in. Okay, there we go. So we have all this. Now I can come over here, topic, planets. I can schedule this. I can schedule this so it appears after a certain amount of time. Again, this is all up to you. If you're the kind of person who wants to keep things sort of organized and out of the way of the kids, then it's just as simple as it can be to go in here and assign these things so that like the end of next week, this would pop in and the kids would see it. I feel bad about unit two. Let's put something in unit two, shall we? So we'll go in here and we'll create, um, let's put a question in because we haven't worked with that yet. Why do we need Google Classroom? Okay, um, as you can see, my question can be short answer. It could be multiple choice. Isn't that funny? Um, so I'm going to say, why do we need Google Classroom? Um, I'm going to give it 100 points. No due date. Students can reply to each other. Or students can answer and edit the question. Not the question, the answer, their answer. In other words, they can go back and look at it and say, whoops, I screwed that up. Now, 
this one is kind of not controversial, but this one is like, do you want kids talking to each other about their answers? And so in this one, this scenario, the problem is you might have that, you know, jerky kid in your class who just likes to go around and put stupid stuff into people's um, comments that they put. So this is this is where class climate really comes to the fro. Are we really doing something here uh, that uh, really invites the kind of collaborative, collective thinking that we so desperately want to have in our classrooms? Or do we need to be aware of the fact we have kids in our classrooms who may cause problems? Now, having said that, you can go into your class roster and you can take someone out of the classroom. In other words, you're, you're not deleting them, but you're not allowing them to do stuff. Uh, I have a problem with that because it's like, I'm going to take away a kid's textbooks. You know, you would never do that. So think about this one. I'm going to go ahead and leave it because I think the, the need to have people um, working together is more important than having people, um, one or two people doing something stupid. By the way, did you notice I did that wrong? What I forget to do? I forgot to assign it to a topic. Here we go. And that's another great thing because if you accidentally do that, no harm, no foul, just go back in, go over to your snowmen. I call them snowmen. Actually, the, the correct name is more options. Um, and, you know, just come down to edit and put it in there. It's just not that hard, guys. And as I said, once again, if I feel like I need to move things up and down within this structure, da -da -da -da, just move it up and down. Not a problem. Okay. Uh, let's see. One more. Let's look at the edit one more time. All students points, right? No due date, of course, I would, we would change that. We would change that. Um, when I get Carrie in here this afternoon, we're going to talk about the rubric thing. I, I want uh, her eyes because I think she does rubrics in her classroom. And if she doesn't, then we'll do one together so I can show you what that's like. All right. So that is a Google Classroom, the basic structure of the Google Classroom. What do we take away from it? Oh, let's do one more thing. Let's add one more thing. Let's do a material. Now, remember we talked about material. Things to use for all assignments. Now I'm going to come down here. Use this for your research and assignments. Add Google Drive. You with me? So we go in here into the drive, and now I can come down here. And I'm just going to I'm going to throw everything under the sun in here. Now, I understand and I think you understand that I'm playing right now. I'm not doing the sort of deep focus of what it would take. Because I'd, I haven't gone out, you know, I could be looking at links. I could be looking at files. I could be looking at YouTube. I could be looking at all kinds of things that I could put into this materials. In fact, let's just do that. Let's go down through it and add stuff. So I'm going to go to link. Let me go find a link right now. Let's just do a quick steps to writing an essay. See, you've got all this right here. Let me just grab this one. I don't know if it's any good, but you know, you get the idea. So I'm going to go and grab that, grab this link. Already I'm seeing the car ads. I'm going to bring it back into my classroom. OK, 
Okay, so this time let's throw a link in. We'll add the link. So now we've got this in there as well. YouTube. -y. And we're going to search the YouTube for right. I don't have to be, you know, specific here. I can say write essay. And let's see what the YouTube comes up with. How to write a good essay. Paraphrasing the question. How to write a good essay. I'm going to grab this one. Okay. So I've got all this stuff here. And I'll come back in here. And let's do one last one. File. And on this one, I could go and upload something from my computer. Or I can use my drive. Or if I'm shared with someone else, I can use their drive. So I'm going to go select from my computer, Google Teacher Certification. Um, what do we got in here that we could do? Let's grab that. And that's a, that's a PowerPoint in another class, but you get the idea. So in this materials folder, now I have all this stuff in here. What can I do with it? Notice it would let me send it to a topic. So now we've got a choice here. If I just post it, let's go back and look. If I post it, where is it? It's at the top. Okay. And that's because it was the last thing we put in here. But if we were to turn around right now, well, let's show you. So if I turned around right now and created something else, and added it in, notice it doesn't move. It stays up there at the top. So that materials folder really becomes important for you as a way of having a one-stop shop where you put all of the kinds of things that kids might need to have access to for all of the work that represented in these two units in this one we call planets. So see if we come in here and click on that, there it is. Those are all the things that we put in there that we could now go back and have available to us. Simple, huh? That is, the, that is the structure of the Google Classroom. It's creating all of this kind of topic focus. Um, one of the things that I just kind of cringe when I look at some Google Classrooms is it's just sort of stuff just thrown in there. And you're like, how in the world? You know, obviously, if I were to turn to the teacher and say, what does this all mean? They'll tell you because they created it. But if I were a kid trying to navigate through that, I would be in trouble. Okay. Again, back in the stream, it's letting us know that we have this stuff has happened. This is where the work takes place. This is where the people live. <laughs> All righty. Kind of cool, huh? It's probably the thing that I love the most about it. And the thing drives some people crazy, but I, I, again, when we get together this afternoon with Carrie, we're going to have a long conversation about this. My thinking, and I think the scenarios have shown you that. Have you noticed in the scenarios, we always go to exam materials. We always go to that folder we created in our Google Drive. The thinking is straightforward. The drive is that big closet where you keep everything in it. It's the filing cabinet where you keep everything in it. So that then when you get to this point where you're starting to put stuff in here, you have the ability to easily add stuff into your classroom because it's all located over there in the drive. And then the power of it is when it's in the drive, and we saw this the other day when we were working, I can pull it in and I can assign a copy of whatever it is in the drive to each student. Or 
as we talked about the other day as well, I can assign to groups of students different copies of whatever it is I have in my Google Drive. Why would I do that? I have kids in the room who, have, who are struggling readers, so I might have a Google Doc that is written at their grade level. Maybe they read at a second grade level and I'm in a fifth grade class. Fine. Create a document for them. Don't change. Don't get easier. In other words, the assignment isn't any easier, but the language of the assignment might be made for them so they can read it without trouble. Okay, now let's go to the scenario for today. And he has, um, let me just start off with this task three down here about Google Plus and so on and so on. Well, um, as he says right here in the scenario, this is a question that you would find in a level two. Well, okay, that's fine. We're not doing two, we're doing level one. Thank you. So we're just going to work with this up here. We're going to create a Google group. We're going to call it Google Food Group. We're going to invite our good friend, Miss Fissett, at GCE Level 1 Parent. Notice how finally I've got that in my head. And then we're going to send out an email to this Google Food Group address. He tells you that you need to pay attention to the email address of the group. Now, let's go to the group so I can show you. Let's go over here. And by now, you know how this works. Groups.google.com, just like classroom.google.com, docs.google.com, slides.google.com, drive.google.com. We get it. Now, in the scenario, he says to go in here and I admit that I kind of cheated and did this earlier, and put in a group called Google Food Group. Let me show you what happens when you do that. So we're going to go up here. We're going to put in Google Food Group. Hello, this is already taken. Okay, fine. So I tell you, I'm going to call mine Google Food Groups 1. I have that one? Thanks. Notice what this is what he says. This is the email for this group. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that so I can have it readily available to me. So right click, copy. Now he wants us to I thought he wanted us to put something in here. Nope. Okay. And then subject and body. Got it. All righty. So I'm going to go over here. What am I going to do? Hello. Gmail, which I really don't even need to do the whole thing because I've got it on this computer. But, you know, I'll do it. Gmail.google.com. All right. So we're going to create a new uh, email. Compose. And we're sending it to that group that I just created, and remember I copied out the uh, the address and subject. Welcome to the Google Foo group. Alrighty, so we'll put that in to the Google Foo group. Well, I'm going to call it Swan because that's what it is. Okay. And then it wants me to put a message in. Welcome. Thank you for joining my group. Well, you're welcome. And I'm going to say, welcome to my group. Yay. So I have created a little Gmail. Well, thank you for joining my group. Okay. Sorry. Thank you for joining my group. You know, I've had people ask me, they say, um, so as we notice it, what you're a lousy typist, would it 
take off on the test if you type in things and you make, you know, mistakes? Actually, surprisingly, no. Um, when I took the test the second time, um, I was, because, you know, I took it the first time without studying anything and I failed. So when I took it the second time, I, I breezed right through it. But the thing about it was I noticed when I went back and looked at it that, uh, and you could do that, by the way, um, that I had all kinds of spelling errors. So I don't know if they if they take off for that or if it's just they look to see if the content's there. Having been someone on the other side of the testing table, in other words, I led a group of uh, resource teachers and we designed a computer test that we gave in Jefferson County to over 25,000 kids every year. Um, and one year I sat down and tried to figure out how to use XML to grade the test. What's interesting is when you take a test, when you create a test and you give it to 25,000 people, you realize I've now got to grade 25,000 people. And if your test has things in it like this, where you're asking people to write things and it's not just multiple choice, but, and you're asking them to demonstrate how to create uh, slideshows and all that sort of thing, it really becomes a pain. And we used to have to hire people to come in and do it. One year, actually two years, we hired the ladies who were the guests out at the women's reformatory out in LaGrange, and they were our graders. Um, I've, I've used, I've used uh, teachers who came in and were paid a stipend. I mean, we, it really was a major task to grade this. So I, when I tried to do it through XML, which basically would just look and see what you had. The problem was everything had to be exact. In other words, the XML model uh, key file would say, oh, you spelled fun, F-I-N, so therefore it's wrong. So we had to end up going back and checking everything again. All righty, let's see. Sorry, I went off on a tangent on you. And there we go, sin. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Okay, so it doesn't recognize my address up here because, well, even though it's a you know, legitimate address, let's go back and double check myself here. Here's my address, https groups google.com slash forum google flows group swan. So what's happening here, let me go ahead and I'll copy it again. Two things can be happening here. In other words, it doesn't recognize this as a legitimate group, as an, not a legitimate group, but as a legitimate email. Because see, when I put in my name, it shows that I'm legit. So when I go back here and grab that again, let's do it again. So there's my email address for my group. That's the point. And I go back in here and I drop it in here. Let's go ahead now and see. Yeah, it looks right. But then when I try to send it, right. And that's okay. In other words, to have done this correctly, I'd have to go in and what? For this to have worked. I would have to have gone in and gone to Gmail, where I am right now, and created an account and called that account. What did I call this thing? <laughs> Google Foo Group Swan. So I'd have to create a Gmail account that would have Google Foo Swan, et cetera, et cetera. And then this would have worked. So don't freak out if it doesn't work for you because it's there. All righty. Now, let's see. The last thing was the Google Plus, and then we don't need to worry about that, folkies. That's just not something that we should worry about. Go back to here one last time. For all students, again, remember what I told you, that if you have a class of students and you get this, what you should also have is a list down here of the students in your class. All right, let's jump back here because I do have homework for you. It's good homework, by the way. So you're going to go in at the bottom of 10 and you're going to click on the link that says practice exam. And you're going to start over and you're going to put your name in here. 
don't care what name you put in. This is for you, not me. And you're going to replay the game. Now, this is as close as I can get to what I think. Well, it's not what I think. I know is on the Google quiz. There are 45 questions here. Now on the Google quiz, on the Google test, there's only 20. So if you can get all of these right, you are in really good shape. Notice if you want to turn things off down here. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't need the sound effects. I don't need the music. Um, you know, I don't need all of this. Oh, I couldn't read aloud to you. That's, that's kind of nice. So you can do all that or you can turn it off. It's up to you. You know, I would turn them all off because I need to focus. And then if, play the game. Yes, it's a game. And then here you go. So you need to create a pie chart to show the percentage of students who passed my class. What app do I use? Come on, you know this. Sheets. And it tells you if you got it right. Now, if you get it wrong, what it will do, you must have a flash drive to save all your documents on Google Docs. We're going to say true because we know it's wrong. To create graphic design, with, you should employ drawings. Okay. You get it? All right. Uh, I'll go back in. And you want know, you started a thing, darn thing. See, you just it shows you the right answer. It's what I wanted to show you. So you you this should be something that you should do uh, because it really does give you a good sense of where you are at this moment. The other thing I wanted to show you, which I think is also really important, let's go look at this. This is how you can sign up for the exam. This gives you the directions. So make sure you watch this. Uh, don't freak out when you do it if it takes a little while for it to kick in. Uh, when we, the last time we did this training, we were, we were at UofL. We were in one of the classrooms there in the ERTC. And it took a while for everything to kick in, but it kicked in. So take your time. Remember, you are in... Um, three hours. You're in for three hours. But here's what I want to show you. Please go through these. Don't in be intimidated by it. Just take a deep breath and do it. If you mess it up the first time, you can turn right around and take it again in, what is it, 14 days then? And you don't have to pay for it again. The training modules are very helpful, but taking time to play with each one of the apps, duh. That's why we've done what we've done. Use two devices. Boy, this is a biggie. If you can have another device in the room with you when you take the test, in other words, if you have two computers, if you have a tablet, have it there so you can um, look stuff up, do stuff on the other device before you put in the answer. Use the sample. <laughs> How many times have we said that to you? Do the practice modules, let people, you just need to make sure that you get this in your head. Don't be afraid to use Google search. And I'll tell you, I'll put the whole darn question into Google search. This one's a biggie. There are lots and lots of steps, and you've seen that, to follow during the exam scenarios. Copy and pasting links, text headings, etc. Save time. You know how to copy and paste. I'm not going to insult you. But you know, like I just did with our it, email address for, for our Google group, copy things, paste things, do that. Don't sit there and try to recreate the wheel. More used tools, there you are. Double monitors, like I said. Do not spend too much time on any one task. That's how I got in trouble the first time. You can come back and review everything before you submit your test. And here's what this says. I like the mark for review feature during the test. You can click a button to indicate that you want to go back again. I'll do all the questions and go back to the ones I was unsure about. Don't click everything. <laughs> if, if you're clicking everything, you're in trouble. 
But if you are running into something and it just is like, what, what? And you want to have the time to go back and focus on that one. And of course, use your devices, use the things that we've given you. Um, if you had the FISIT book with you, go back and look at all that. This one is something that I really stress to folks when I do this in person. Watch the wording of the questions. Some of these questions are badly done. Whoever created these questions would not pass a college education assessment course. Um, they're really, really badly written in the sense that they are negatives. What is something not? And that's not allowed anymore, folks. And I really take umbrage, and I have written on the Google forum that this really needs to get changed. It's unfair. Uh, it's stupid. And it's one of those things where I think that they really, it, it just, you know, don't use the questions. As I've shown you, I we have the question bank. It's right here. Uh, if you want to look at all 900 some odd questions in there, you know, you can. But my point is they could easily go through that question bank and just pull out all the tricky questions and just not use them. I am really a almost obsessed with tests that are solid tests that are very reliable and are very valid. And I would argue with you that using of tricky questions does not make a test very valid. Complete the first part of the level one and two exams as quick as you can. You need as much time as possible for the task oriented scenarios. Boy, that one's right. If you know, that's why I'm giving you that, that one test today. If you can go through that and time yourself, it's 45 questions. If you can get that done in a reasonable amount of time, what's a reasonable amount of time? Five, 10 minutes. Then you know that you've got that licked because you're only going to get 20 of them. And if you go through them and you have a question, they're like, what? Remember what I said to do, literally Google the question. Have a plan if your internet goes out. Well, <laughs> okay, you know, use your phone as a hotspot unless you have to pay for the data, which, for the data. Um, I don't really have an answer for that one. Make sure your computer and Chrome browser is updated so it does not decide that it wants to be updated during your exam. Um, that happened to us during a training session, thank God. And, you know, use the lessons in the training center, okay? Use it there. I'm still glad that I went diligently through the course. That's a good one. I used every minute of the three hours allowed for exam. Watch your time carefully. The first time I did it and failed, I used up right up to the three hours. The second time I did it, a breezed. Make sure you're, you plan a specific time to take your exam. They expire seven days after you receive your login information. That's another good point. Once you get your test set up, you still have seven days to take the test. So if you just want to get it out of the way, because, you know, you, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I have a very busy week ahead, so it looks like Friday's open. I'll go ahead and get myself set up, and then I'll come back in on Friday and take the test. It can take up to 24 hours to receive your exam instructions, so register ahead of time. Yes, 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 and yes. Although... As I said, when we took the test at U of L in ERTC, we all got our stuff right away. Search is more, most important skill in level one and level two. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, use the control F to quickly find keywords in an email or website. Speed is the key if you're going to finish on time. Use copy and paste, yep. In the task portion of level one, and make sure you follow the directions precisely. Now, there you go. Your file name, spelling, folder locations must be exactly as instructed in order to receive credit for the question. That's a good one. Oh, looky, got a software update. <laughs> yep. Use the comment function to keep reminders and notes directly on your practice files. That's a good one. Don't be freaked out by the webcam during the level. No one is watching you. That's right. When taking your exam, use an incognito window in Chrome to sign into your special Google test. They'll tell you how to do that. Um, let's see. It's under, it's under, it's under, under window. And basically what it does is it blocks it from... Um, 
holding on to any information you do in the test. Why? Because it doesn't want people downloading, you know, the, the test and, and sharing with other people. Although they freely give everybody the test. So what the heck. Use the pen tab feature, pen tab feature of Chrome to reduce the risk of accidentally closing the exam tab you're working on. That is a good one. You know, pen, dunk, and then you won't accidentally close it out. Okay? Right click on the tab, come down the pen, and pin it down. I can't tell you the number of times when I have been working in this tab right up here that has to do with this is how the Collaborate Ultra works. I've accidentally closed that out. So now I pin it every time. Use the Google Calendar app for iOS and Android to schedule time study for your certification test. Okay, fine. Preparing yourself is lonely and boring. <laughs> I agree. Do this with, with a friend. Sit down, do the flashcards together, do, take the test together. Take the, uh, take the sample test together and take the test together. When we took the test in uh, the RTC, we had people, we spread people out a little bit, but we didn't really make a big deal about it. Um, in fact, some folks were freaking out because they could, when they took their, you take a picture of yourself at the beginning of the test and they were saying, I can see, I can see Allie behind me. And don't worry about it. It sees you. That's the important thing. So yeah, do it together. Go in your education in Google Plus. Eh. Put together a plan to develop your skills. Sure. Um, yep, that we you have that. It's in here. Ooh. Yep. Strongly, strongly urges. And I put the YouTube videos in. So the YouTube videos that are in here are the latest, latest of the docs, slides, sheets. I forget what else I have in here. Um, uh, hangouts, things like that. They are the latest, greatest. So make sure you go through those. And I'll show you where they are. Don't. Um, yeah, help people, you know. Be the, be the local Google guru for your school. Boy, we need them. We need them, especially during this time of uh, TMI. Um, you know, it's um, we we say this, and and this was the way we sold this to you, is that when you get to be a Google teacher, you get to put that little Google teacher certified on your email, and I cannot stress enough to you, principals will take note of that. Yep, yep. This is this is why I screwed up. I thought, oh, I know how to do all this stuff. Yeah, it kicked me right in the butt. Uh, don't take it too soon. Make sure you've got it in your head. Find a study buddy, right? And double check, so on. I forgot to write down my new password. And <laughs> yeah, that's another one. Make sure you write down everything that when you sign up for the test that it gives you, because it, Chrome's not going to remember it. LastPass won't remember it. Um, yeah, again, and I, I I'm. I really, you know, I, I apologize because I, I think some of the multi-choice part of the test is really uh, not valid, frankly. It's reliable in the sense that, you know, it's going to trick people up, but I don't think it's a good, it's a good way to do a test. And remember, don't overthink the scenarios. Do it. And if you know how to do it, you'll be fine. Make sure you block off three full hours. Sure. Don't skip anything. <laughs> okay. Do not overthink the exam. Boy, that's the truth. Do not overthink the exam. Read all questions and answers at least twice. Create the content exactly as they asked. Do not get fancy. Now, that is a good one. Um, you know, sometimes you could get a little, want to get a little fancy because it's boring, but don't. Just do what they say. And as we talked about earlier, Highlight whatever it is that's being asked of you. In other words, if, if the subject is this and the text is that, highlight it, paste it in. Monitors, be sure to use that. Uh, and, and be sure to save your work in the listed folder. So, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's a cute one. Make sure the weather report, you don't want the power to get knocked out. Uh, yes. Well, thank you. They were. 
Uh, there's no substitute for practice. Search is an essential. Maximize your environment. The entire Google certification community is cheering for you. And there's the guy who created this. Okay, one last tour around the whole thing just so that you're clear on what is available for you in this site. So here's where your Google creation account, if you don't have a Google one, you will need one. Um, this is everything you need to do to get Google Teacher Certified from the Goog. There you go. So there's your training, there's your practice, there's your certification. If what I do is too fast, if I'm too disjointed, if you just don't like listening to me, and you're just the kind of person who needs to do things on their own, shut the door, go away, leave me alone, do it this way. Seriously, do it that way. Then down here in each one of these level sections, I have, like I said, the latest, greatest of all the videos. Okay? So you're not going to get tripped up because that, like I said, one of the first times we met, one of the first things I said to you is Google is wonderful, except they have a bad habit of updating things and not letting you know, unless you belong to one of the Google forums, which how many of us are going to do that? And then here's the calendar. This is a good one. Watch the calendar. Watch the calendar. Watch the calendar. And then here's Google Groups, the thing we just got through doing. They wouldn't let us do it. And then here's the Gmail piece. Here's the Hangouts piece. I'd, should I do a Hangouts? Maybe I should show you Hangouts real fast. Hangouts is one of those things. Hey, if you've been using Zoom, you got Hangouts. Uh, the only thing about Hangouts is that it does put things in different places. But it's the same idea as everything else in the Googleverse and any other one you've been doing. So I use the Google Hangout for this right here. You see this? It's called STLP Podcast Q&A. And the last time I had a scheduled meeting was March 25th. Google is, our Google Hangouts is as easy as it can be. You just go in, you put in what you're gonna be doing, and then here's the list of people who came. I can then send out a link in an email, I can leave it, of course. Uh, I'm not going to leave it. But it's it's just not hard. To make a video call, you basically click here. And then who am I calling? Well, you know how, how to do this. You did it before. So I would put people in here. You know, for giggles, let's see what happens. GCE <laughs> level 1. Who are we going to call? Let's call. Let's call the parent. We're going to invite them. And hello, hello. Think easy. I turned off the camera, so you wouldn't have to look at my face. It's just like Zoom. Uh, and once you get into a call up here in the upper um, right-hand corner. There, you can click up there and it'll drop down and you can see the um, sharing your screen, stuff like that. Easy. But please, please take the time to look at the stuff that I've given you. It doesn't have to be my stuff. It can be just the stuff I put in here for you. Oh, here's one more. Well, you know sites. We did sites. Google Citizenship. Read this one, please. Um, I teach a whole class on this. And I think when we do it, we played in here. This is a game that the Google came up with. It's actually pretty fun. But what's going to be on here is, if you want to look at it, look at this. Okay? Because this will show you the kinds of questions that the Google test has about digital citizenship. I am in section three of the Google Teacher Level One. Uh, we have spent so much time with the scenarios. I should probably make sure you understand that each one of these sections here contains 
uh, information about each one of the Google skills. This is Google Keep. Uh, this is where you can, I think there's a question in the Google about this where it says, take a note. Okay. And I can close it. Now, when I've, once I've done that, I can do what? You know this. I can come down here and I can have someone else join my note. I could make it pretty. Actually, that's not funny. I can, I can give it a color so that my notes are organized. I can add a picture to it so it's organized, okay? I can archive it. In other words, I can take it off the board, but I don't get rid of it. And I can add a drawing. I can make a copy, copy to Google Docs. So I could have, you know, this is like a three by five card. So I could put it into my Google Docs. I can have a reminder to look at this again, okay? This is keep. And when you um, look at Keep, it's got a little, you can kind of link out to the draw. Isn't that nice? So what is Google Keep for? Google Keep is for collecting, organizing, labeling notes. That's all. That was one we didn't do. That's why I jumped back and showed you. So I think we've done just about everything that's in here. Um, and as I said, at two o'clock today, we will have a guest pop in. And if you're not here, that's fine. We're going to record it and we'll send it out to you. Please, 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 just for your peace of mind, take this goofy little fun thing. And if you fly through it, in other words, if you're sitting there taking it and you're going, well, this is stupid, this is easy, you'll be fine on the test. The other thing probably you need to work on, if anything, is sheets. Most people are not familiar, comfortable with working with spreadsheets. I would take the time to watch that video that's in here because it's good. And I would take the time to play inside of Google Sheets until you're comfortable with it. Um, you know, everything in there is pretty much under the various menus. And if you've ever worked in Excel, surprise, it's different. <laughs> so you want to go back and make sure you see where everything is. All right, that's it. Uh, two o'clock, I'll be back here with uh, Carrie Gupton. We'll be in the same exact same spot in the Google um, GTC. Uh, I want you to pass this test with flying colors. I want you to be able to put that... Google certified teacher proudly on your email and you will be fine. If you have questions, comments, concerns, 502-457-2937. Also, if you're a Johnny come lately to all of this, don't hesitate to use that um, text number and yell at me. Say, hey, uh, I decided to do this, but I wasn't there for the trainings. Fine. We'll set aside the time to come in and meet with you within this uh, training module. I'll need to put your name in and everything so you can find it. But, but we'll get you. We'll get you up to it. 502-457-2937. And as always, stay safe. Take care of each other. We'll all get through this together. And if you've been here with me the entire time, I hope someday to be able to smile at you and thank you and congratulate you on becoming a Google certified teacher. Talk to you.